in life, all of us, every single one of us faces challenging, heartbreaking moments. What I haven't done is I've never allowed it to close me. I'm not crowning myself special here because I do believe that the larger majority of us do have the ability to handle challenges on this level and to ultimately care about ourselves enough that we're going to not become a victim of our circumstances and instead use the circumstances that are very heartbreaking, challenging, traumatic, like every, all of that, to come to understand more about ourselves in a way that deepens us and that brings us into more love for ourselves. This is The Roxanne Show. Get ready. It's time to rise. Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Roxanne Show. In today's episode, I am going to tease out an Instagram post that I put up not that long ago that got so much beautiful, loving feedback. And here's why you want to stick around and listen to this. In life, all of us, every single one of us faces challenging, heartbreaking moments, right? So whether it's romantically, whether it's family stuff, whether it's friendships, whether it's disappointments in career, any and all of that. I mean, life is rough in so many ways, right? And the whole idea behind the post that I put up is these moments that can break you and disconnect you from yourself, ultimately closing you and making you become rigid and fragile, something I talk about all the time, which is not what we want. What I'm presenting here in this post that I'm going to read to you and I'm going to elaborate on is that if we can utilize these challenging moments that present us with the opportunity to close, but instead to open and to deepen into our self-connection, we not only move through those challenges with more resilience, with more strength, but we actually leverage them to get into a deeper, higher, more loving, trusted, and aware relationship with ourself, which is truly the most important thing that we, all of us, need to be doing in our life, throughout our lives. Okay, so the post reads as follows. I love to love. I'm a full-on, no-holding-back, affectionate-as-fuck lover. I don't love ya. I love you is how I roll. Direct, intentional, and meant from my core. The greatest misconception. If I'm able to love so big and so freely, maybe I haven't been hurt. Far from it. Having an open heart doesn't mean I haven't been hurt. I've taken endless punches throughout my life that hurt and badly. But what those hurt moments have never done is closed me. They never took me from the true essence that I am, which is love. They did the opposite. They opened me wider and deeper, bringing me into more awareness, honesty, respect, and love for myself. Every single time. How? Because when you truly embrace life as a journey of self-discovery that lends to self-realization, that guides your path of mastery and self-actualization, every single experience becomes material of value. Nothing is a waste. Nothing is designed to keep you down and close you. It's all designed to expand, ascend, and open you up into greater expressions of your authentic self. Self-compassion plays a big role in this process. You need space to be a human and go through messy moments. We all do. Contrast is our greatest teacher. Embracing this comes easier when you apply self-compassion to your journey and process. Allow the love that you are to guide you into a deeper relationship with yourself, a relationship that is authentic, trusted, revered, and absolute. Be your own lover, no matter whose lover you are. Love yourself through the highs and the hards. Keep opening your heart and allowing it to expand you into your ultimate life fulfillment. 
It's designed to do exactly that. So I want to tease out piece by piece. So, you know, I started the post with a bit about me, right? And I'll just touch on that really quick, that it is so true. You know, anyone in my life who knows me knows I am a hardcore, affectionate lover. I really don't love ya. <laughs> I don't you too when you love me. I love you. I'm very direct and very intentional about these words because they're very honest and they come from a very deep part of my being. They come from the essence of, of who I am, which is love. And no matter what challenges I have and continue to face in my life, again, full spectrum, right? Romantically, I've gone through that. I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, you know, endless career friendships, like the, the whole gamut of challenges. Like I have faced it all and and still in so many capacities in my life, you know, still, you know, you have family issues. There's, there's just, there's always going to be challenges that all of us are facing, right? What I haven't done is I've never allowed it to close me, right? And, and what I want to present here is that I'm not special for this. What I am is very clear in that the relationship that I have with myself is the most important relationship, first and foremost. Now, that can sound very self-centered or, you know, anything of that nature. But in fact, my ability to hold such love, respect, and trust within myself, the capacity that I have to love myself is why I'm able to be such a hardcore lover to everyone that I love in my life. Right. And it's, it's, it keeps me open and warm to life. Right. So whether you're somebody I'm just meeting and we're connecting and there's good energy with, you know, you're going to, you're going to feel that, that, that warmth that's coming out of me. Or if you're someone who's, you know, one of my writer dies, I mean, you know, you already know how I roll. Right. Again, the point here though is that this openness and this ability to be so free in how I express my love is not because I haven't been hurt. It is not the case at all. It's just because I've chosen to use those experiences to understand myself more, right? To go inward instead of becoming a victim, ultimately of the circumstance. And I say that with compassion to all of the avenues of hurt that exist that actually do victimize an individual. I've, I've experienced that in my own life, in my own upbringing, in my childhood. You know, we, my siblings, my mother, you know, we were victims of domestic violence. And that's a, just a truth. But I did not allow that truth to infect the relationship that I have with myself and who I am authentically, right? Just kind of, and, and, and maybe that is, you know, something that I came out into this world with, you know, maybe, uh, the more resilience, more, uh, ability to, to be able to navigate that psychologically at a, a stronger level. But I, I still, I'm not crowning myself special here because I do believe that, the larger majority of us do have the ability to handle challenges on this level and to ultimately care about ourselves enough that we're going to not become a victim of our circumstances and instead use the circumstances that are very heartbreaking, challenging, traumatic, like every, all of that, to come to understand more about ourselves in a way that deepens us and that brings us into more love for ourselves, right? That's the piece here that's so important. You might be somebody right now going through something really heavy, you know, that's making you want to close or you may already feel closed. But the closing piece, it's so interesting because the very thing that you or any one of us needs in that moment is to not close, is to feel more connected to our true nature, which is love, which is love, right? So you think about it and it feels like a protective measure. Are you closing, right? 
but it's actually harming. It's not protecting. And it's not protecting you in the moment, you know, from, from whatever it is that you're experiencing. And it's certainly anytime that you're becoming closed, you become more rigid, right? You're tense. You, you, you're not supple. You're not able to move through your emotion, right? You're, there's resistance. There's um, just a lack of fle- psychological flexibility that is so necessary to keep you moving through that challenge in the healthiest way possible. And healthy for me is stress management. It's not becoming a victim of your circumstances and turning to activities that are actually more harmful to you, numbing yourself, et cetera. And also creating such resistance within yourself that you are literally closing yourself off from your self, capital S-E-L-F, right? The, the, the parts of you that are there to soothe you, are there to console you, are there to nurture you through your challenging moments, right? I speak about this from absolute experience. Again, I had the full range of challenges. I've, I've been through it all. So let me, let me go back to the post. And there's a, there's a sentence that's pretty, it's actually pretty long, but it's, it really encapsulates to me the whole idea around what we're doing here in life. It's the, because when you truly embrace, let me start that again, hold on. So it's this section right here. Because when you truly embrace life as a journey of self-discovery that lends to self-realization, that guides your path of mastery and self-actualization, every single experience becomes material of value. Nothing is a waste. Self-discovery to self-realization, which then helps you move into more mastery of self, which then moves you into becoming a self-actualized individual. And whether you know it or not, that's actually what we all want. We want to live from our highest state of greatness, from our greatest capabilities, right? We want to live from the highest expression of ourself, whatever that is, that we can experience in this life. And in order to do that, to move on that path, the self-discovery piece has to come in. If, If you're not learning about yourself, in life, then you're not even in the game. You're, you're not, right? So the self-discovery helps you get to self-realization. When we start to realize more about ourself, the ways at which we function in life, right? The ways at which we process life, right? This is important, vital information for us that then provides material for us to step into mastery of self. Right? And then it carries forward into the self-actualization process. So that that was a really important piece right there. And the part of it where I state nothing is a waste, this is really a key point that I want to drill here. The hards are just as important as the highs. I never say good or bad. To me, that offers nothing but judgment cannot be learning and judging at the same time. A bad day, I don't have bad days. But that doesn't do anything for me. I have hard days. But hard allows me to see myself in the hard moments. How am I moving through the hard moment? You know what 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 are the attributes that I'm utilizing to move through the hard moment? You know what do I need for myself to move through the hard moment? Bad bad offers nothing. Right? So side side, um, little side point there that I think is really important, right? So do you have a bad day or do you have a hard day? Think about that. A hard day will give you something if you're open to it. And that's a lot of the premise of this post as well. We have to be open to receiving the gifts that come in the hard. And in this particular episode and what I'm sharing here is the hard, 
the gifts that come from the hard that allow us to get closer to ourself in ways that are so substantial for our ideal growth in life. The person who doesn't know how to love themselves, who doesn't know how to trust themselves, who doesn't know how to respect themselves, who doesn't know how to observe and learn themselves is not the person who's going far in life, is the person who is ultimately going to feel like shit through life until that stuff starts to turn around and you become a student of yourself, which I am here to say that every single one of us needs to be in our life full time. I don't care how great you get at something. You're, you're mastering this. You're badass at that. You're 10 million in your community who love you for this. You're still a fucking student forever of yourself first and foremost. Okay. You can master things and still be a student. In fact, I say that mastery and a student, the master and student need to be active full time throughout the rest of your life, right? It's, it's never, you've got this to the point where you don't, let me frame it this way. The learning is not a destination. It's a fucking journey for the rest of your life, right? Getting into this relationship with yourself that I'm selling you on, not just in this episode, but in every aspect of my work, this loving, trusted, revered relationship with your authentic self, that's not a destination. That's a fucking life journey, right? And you're going to have some pivotal moments and some monumental moments of achievement, of realization, of mastery, and then you're going to keep going through life and you're going to continue to be a student again because so many more moments are going to come at you and test you and show you parts of yourself that you've never seen before or parts of life that you haven't experienced before. And you have to create a new uh, experience for yourself as you move through these new, the newness of whatever it is that you're moving yourself through. You have to fortify or and develop more psychological skills to be able to maneuver through, you know, these new experiences, right? That ultimately, again, are all designed to bring you back home to this relationship with yourself. When you get into this place where you start to look at your life, everything that you're moving through as material for you to develop this relationship with yourself, even the hardest of hard fucking moments where you're on your knees, and that could be you right now, just not even knowing how to do your tomorrow because you're just, you're so immobilized in your today, right? When you can really register what I'm saying here, that everything is designed for you to get into the, the most incredible, loving, supportive, trusted relationship with yourself, that will help you get through, even if it's minute by minute, hour by hour, you know, that's all we're living anyways, right? It's just now, 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 until the next now, until the next now, right? Time's just a construct. But that's going to help you. Your, your whole attitude towards everything that you're experienced to be so much more empowered. You never become a victim of anything hard that you're facing. You use it as material to leverage this relationship that I'm talking about with yourself. And that relationship, as you continue to invest and develop it, carries you forward in your life in the most fucking incredible of ways. Self-compassion. I talk about self-compassion a lot, and I forever will. I think it's actually really important, and I think that I maybe have a special voice in this particular region because I talk about mastery. Everything is high performance, right? The high performance space, we don't usually hear about self-compassion, right? And I have reasons why I believe that that's the case, you know, where a lot of the high performance conversation is born from. Those mindsets and voices are not really dialed in to be thinking about the vital importance of self-compassion. If you're new and you haven't heard me speak about self-compassion yet, I just want to let me set the table here really quick. 
When I talk about self-compassion, I actually see this as a high-performance tool. It is not coddling and not taking accountability for certain circumstances that you need to take accountability for or, you know, avoiding, you know, just what's necessary for you to extract the material that you need to grow in your life. So let's just say, you know, you came up short and you made a mistake, right? You tried, but, you know, maybe for whatever reason, you're, this is, we'll just use work. It's a work-related situation and you just, you fucked up. You fucked up. Okay. Self-compassion is not you not acknowledging that you fucked up. Self-compassion is, I acknowledge that I fucked up. I don't need to disrespect myself and beat myself up for this. But what I do need to do is acknowledge, is learn, and is uphold myself in a way that doesn't allow me get to get stuck in the negative energy from messing up so that I can carry forward at a higher expression of myself, a learned expression, you know, and, and, and just essentially keep it fucking moving forward. This is why it's so important because a lot of people, when there's a mistake or there's, you know, some kind of issue like that, why, why do so many people get stuck in the guilt and the shame and, you know, all of that energy? Because they're fucking beating themselves up over it. And that is so, it's a roadblock. It literally does not allow you to move forward. So when I talk about self-compassion, let's not confuse this as, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going to baby myself and I'm not going to take responsibility. And I'm, you know, I've got blinders on to, to actually notice, what, you know, everything that I need to, to pay attention to, to learn and to grow and to move forward from this. No, no, no. It's just allowing you the space to be a fucking human because all of us mess up. All of us go through messy moments, or maybe it's not even that you messed up. Maybe there's a circumstance that's come into your life that's putting so much pressure on yourself right now. Like it's, it's a hard moment, right? You need to hold yourself. You need compassion for yourself in that moment. And that that's just you recognizing yourself with love. It's recognizing yourself with respect. I need to repeat that. Self-compassion is you recognizing yourself with love and respect in a challenging moment in your life. The same way that you would want someone to support you from the external, give you the hug, give you the words of encouragement, you know, that's going to help you move through that hard process. What I'm saying is you need to apply that to yourself. All of us do. And when you're able to do that and do that consistently, you are, you're just, you're more capable, period, of moving through hard shit in your life. And the person who is more resilient and has the ability to persevere through challenges is the person who just goes a lot farther. Because life, especially when you're reaching for greatness, par for the course, like tons and tons of challenges in every aspect, the inner world and the external world. So. I really love holding the microphone literally up to express the power of self-compassion. And look, anyone who knows me knows I'm an edgy motherfucker. So I'm not the person who's just living passively and, you know, they're petting myself and, you know, no, I know how to kick my own ass, but I can do it while respecting myself. And that's, that's the goal here, because if you can't uphold your self-respect in these hard moments to where you're able to love yourself in these moments enough to where it's like, okay, I'm not going to beat you up. I don't need to be an asshole to you. I need you to recognize the situation, or I need to recognize you in this hard situation so that we can keep moving forward with confidence, with resilience. That is so huge because if you don't do that, you're tearing at your confidence. You're tearing at your self-esteem. You don't want to be doing that in life. We need strong levels of self-esteem. We need strong levels of self-confidence. You will never outdo your levels of self-esteem and self-confidence in life. Repeating that, you will never outdo your levels of self-esteem and self-confidence. What, what that means is that your life 
experiences and fulfillment will only go as far as those levels. So if you've got low levels of self-esteem and low levels of self-confidence, your life is going to reflect that. And it's probably going to be a very not feel great fucking life, not a life that's robust, that's full of zest, that's giving you radical experiences, especially experiences like, you know, where you get closer to yourself and learn more about yourself and, you know, are going for it in life and betting on yourself and all of that. No, you're not going to, no, because you will never exceed those limits. So we don't want to be, we don't want to be working against ourselves when we're in these hard moments thinking that beating myself up, you know, digging deeper into the kind of hard guilt, shame, whatever, the rejection, any and all this energy, like becoming those emotions. If we're doing that, if we're, we are bringing more of that on to ourselves and and seriously like anchoring yourself in it, then you're literally tearing down your self-esteem and your self-confidence and your self-respect. That's not going to take you anywhere that you want to go. So we we need we need to look at self compassion with so much more reverence and so much more badassery. And I actually think that I'm the voice here to do that, or one of the voices here to do that, because again, I think sometimes you can see, you know, someone who's maybe really we think of self compassion like oh it's so soft and it's so gentle. There's absolutely a beautiful softness to it. Self-compassion keeps my fucking edge strong. It keeps it sharp, right? That's, let me, let me say that one more time. My self-compassion, the softness that comes to me from my self-compassion is what keeps my edge fucking sharp. So that's, I mean, something to think about, but it's, it's, it's really a truth. It's that ability to uphold yourself with love and with respect unconditionally, unconditionally. Shitty moment, you fucked up, this is hard, you're going through it, all of the above, cool. What you're not going to do in those moments is detract from yourself, not love yourself, not respect yourself, and start tearing down very essential attributes that all of us need to live a very beautiful, flourishing life where we are thriving, where we are becoming more self-actualized. I hope with all my heart, my big, loving, open heart, that what I have shared here in this episode got to you, and especially you, if you're somebody right now who really needed to hear this. You're closed or you're closing. You're going through the hard. And you needed to hear this. And I hope that my voice stays with you, truly, to say, listen, whatever the circumstance is, your duty in these moments is to run towards yourself. And I know that's not easy. And if you need support to be able to do that, by all means, I'm not saying this has to be a solo scenario. You know, I'm a mentor. I'm a coach to women. I I'm I am a facilitator of that support, right? Or there's friendships, or however you need that support. But the the goal needs to be to run towards yourself, to keep yourself open, to deepen the relationship that you have with yourself, so that you continuously build these blocks of love, of respect, of trust in yourself, because this is what's going to help you at the highest level above anything else in your life to create the life that's truly going to fulfill you, a life of mastery. You cannot be a broken, fragmented individual with low self-esteem, low self-confidence, low self-love and trust and create a life that kicks ass. You can't. So, Save this episode, repeat it if you need to. Let me know if it really did support you in any capacity. DM me at Roxy Look on Instagram, best place to do it. Um, you can put a, a comment on YouTube in the, in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. I love connecting with you there as well. And 
yeah, again, I just, I really, I, I hope that you didn't just hear this. I hope that you felt it really with all of my content because everything that I share comes from my heart. And it's coming from a heart that has been hurt, but a heart that never closed off to herself, to myself, and has only continued to become stronger, more open, more resilient, and loud. I've got a fucking loud heart, and I love it. And I hope that I can support you to have the most robust, loud, resilient heart, too. So let me know. Roxy, look, comment on YouTube. If you have not already given this podcast a five-star rating or review, it would mean so much to me and my team, truly. If you just took a moment, go in the show notes to do that. There's a very easy link to do it. For those of you who will take a moment to do it, thank you with all my heart. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Queen, this is your call to greatness. If you are ready, and I mean truly ready, to shift anything in your outer experience, your outer reality, your finances, your health, your relationship, anything career related, um, anything spiritual, any shift that you wanna make that has to do with your reality has to first start with shifting who you are, your self-identity. My Future Self Digital Course is your supportive blueprint that helps you achieve this. The inner shapes the outer. So when you get crystal clear on your core beliefs, your core values, your core desires, your high hard goals, you know, when you learn how to rewrite parts of your past that maybe don't feel so great and instead leverage those experiences to be fuel for you to expand and to grow. This is how you start to change the game behind the game of life, which all starts and ends with you. I've designed this course from my heart, soul, and experience to be a femininely fierce experience for you to uncover and connect with your most authentic self. And as a future self student, you get three months free membership access to Queendom. This is where we really get to connect. Queendom is such a rad, sacred, empowered space where every month you get a live Q&A call with me so we can connect and troubleshoot any area of your life that you would like or just get some encouragement from me as well as the other queens in the community. This is a really sacred space and I will see you in Queendom.